Hey, it's Kevin Lawrence here from Lawrence and Company, and I'm here with one of our awesome advisors today, Kristen Hazard. Kristen, how are you doing this morning? I'm fantastic. How are you? Awesome. We were just chatting earlier, and you've just recovered from a trip gone wrong, where your flight that was supposed to arrive late in the evening ended up arriving very, very early the following morning. But you, you, but you made it through, it sounds like. <laughs> Yeah, I landed at 4 a.m., but outside of that, I mean, the trip was great. It's always great working with that client, um, wonderful people, and we accomplished a lot of really good things together. But Even this, on a little bit of sleep, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, makes it fun. Awesome. So just as we're going to dig into a bit, you know, your background and your focus. So where was it that you grew up in this great world we live in? So I'm very lucky to have grown up in White Rock, British Columbia. It's a little beach town just outside of Vancouver. A really great community, lots of sports, which is my background, as we'll get into. And um, yeah, it's just it was great. It's a great spot. It's actually where I live myself right now, and uh, it's one. For those of you that don't know, it's yeah outside of Vancouver, and it basically essentially touches the U.S. border just above Seattle. And from a lot of spots of White Rock, you look right into uh, the U.S. Cool. So you know, you know, we know, we know what you're doing today in, in your work with the with the firm and your clients, which we'll talk about in a minute. But what was your first career? Where did you first get your first initial launch in this world, work wise? Well, outside of you know growing up and repping and umpiring and you know working at Safeway and I think it was yeah Notary Public Office too when I was when <laughs> I was young, serving ice cream on the beach in White Rock. My first real career was a teacher. So after I graduated from university, I stepped into teaching right away. Awesome. And and what did you like about those days teaching? I've always really loved inspiring others and having a direct impact on other people's lives. There is so many great mentors growing up that had that type of impact on me. So mm -hmm. that's really what I wanted to do early on. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. I mean, in many ways, the work we do today is similar and you know, I get, I, I, I bought my high, I was talking with someone about this this week and about how, you know, in my career, I've always been that type of person that likes to help other people and help to inspire them and help them troubleshoot challenging issues. Even when I was really, really young, right. it's kind of, you know, for some people it's in us and um, but yeah, the, the teacher would be in many ways. I was, I was explaining to them that basically in many ways, I'm almost like a teacher and, uh, and obviously a coach to CEOs and executives, which you do a lot of that yourself as well. So these days, uh, what is it that excites you to get going every day and get out of bed? And, you know, what is it that excites you? Yeah. Get you going. Um, well, we have such fantastic people that we get to work with. And what really inspires me to get out of bed is working with those people who are up to really big things. They want to impact the world. They want to impact others that they're working with. And so the opportunity that I get is to partner with them and, and help make a noticeable change within the organizations, which is then impacting, you know, the communities. So that's what really inspires me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. We are, we have amazing clients <laughs> we get to work with, you know, and for those of us in the firm, we know we get to work with amazing people. And, you know, the great thing is, is that we obviously share and teach what we've learned from other clients and, and frameworks and resources. But but they also, you know, we learn lots from these people as well because they're all accomplished in their own in different ways. Cool. Well, I can... Yeah, and it's great to be able to work with so many wonderful people in different industries and different countries across the world and really just leverage each other's experiences, mm -hmm. what we're sharing. And it's it's inspiring to work with people like that. Mm -hmm. And it's also interesting how similar the challenges and things that everyone faces and, and, you know, and the, we work with businesses of multi different scales and sizes and challenges, but generally the issues people face are very, very similar and lots on the people side, which we'll chat about a bit more. Cool. So when you think back for all the, the people that you worked with, you know, and bosses and mentors and coaches and people, who do you think had the biggest impact on your leadership? Who are the people that you know, you probably still hear their voices in your head today. Honestly, it was my grandmother. Mm. So my grandma was the first Canadian to swim the English Channel. So she was very inspiring to me. And not only did she do that, she was the first female president of the Qantas Association. Um, she just broke glass ceilings, not only for, you know, in terms of records, but also just she inspired a lot of people, both male and female growing up. 
So she really pushed me from a very, very young age to be okay stepping outside of your comfort zone mm. and not just being confined by by rules and what society thinks. Um, she also taught me the importance of, you know, having a really strong team of, of support around you so that you can accomplish really great things. She taught me the power of networking from a very young age, mm. um, really good relationships, having strong connections, but also being humble. Like she was so caring and so family oriented. So despite the fact that she was accomplishing big things, she always had time for her family. And she really was about creating experiences and connection. And she's definitely sparkly. She's out there, like very, very adventurous. So, I mean, these are a lot of the attributes that I admire and I embody myself. So she's definitely one that stands out to me. That's awesome. She sounds amazing, like an amazing person. Uh, yeah, that's very cool to have a mentor, especially when it's someone within your family like that. It's interesting. I was in um, Hawaii recently and uh, they had the thing at the resort we're staying where they would do like a morning sunrise ceremony. And it was interesting, this lady that that did this thing with us around sunrise and taught us about their culture. They're talking about a big part of the culture is honoring your ancestors that have been there before and really being guided by and honoring your ancestors and how your ancestors are with you. And in many ways, that's, you know, to have grandparents like that, in many ways, it's like she's still guiding you today, it sounds like. That's that's very cool. Yes. yes. Yeah. I had a very interesting grandmother as well, who I wrote about, and she's in my in your oxygen mask first. And I, you know, talk about she went back to university at age 81. So she was adventurous, adventuresome, curious, always wanting to learn and grow, and uh, okay. which is obviously the same idea, all great attributes of great leaders. Well, they are. And and I was lucky to learn that from a very, very young age. Yeah. And, and have to wait until I was you know stepping into my career like she was a very influential person and I really appreciate what she did for me that's cool cheers to our grandmothers that's awesome um so you went on this path of 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 teaching and and you did lots of stuff on athletics as well what what caused you to become you know to become an advisor and become a coach to leaders in terms of the work that we're doing what was the catalyst for you looking back I, I can see the the journey now but it wasn't just you know from a to b this is what i want to do but yeah i was always coached i was coached from a very very young age and so really understood the impact that having a mentor and an advisor or guide has on you so i also started to coach in the athletics realm at a very young age and so it was always something that just became very very natural for me i was always one that really has push myself. I want, I want to excel. I want to achieve more. So getting that feedback in terms of what's working, what's not, what do we need to tweak? And then how do I make it better next time? That's mm. been ingrained within me. So I, I feel like a lot of those principles that we use as teachers and coaches, um, this is just a natural gift. And this is just a natural thing that I like to do. And so it was, I guess, easy, especially when there is someone named Kevin Lawrence, you know, kind of putting a little bug in my ear in terms of, hey, you should try this, but in a different arena. You should, you know, use that skill set that you have, but come and do it within a, you know, more entrepreneurial corporate setting. I thought, why not? So I jumped in and I'm so grateful that I did. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like really in hindsight that it was almost like a natural progression based on what you've been doing your whole career. Exactly. Awesome. Cool. So Kind of now that we're today, you know, being an advisor and a coach to leaders and helping to develop people and, and expand their talents, how would you describe the work you do? And within that work, what would you say your sweet spot is, like your place where you just thrive and do your best and love it the most? I, I really love developing people, developing teams. So from a you know a holistic perspective, like leadership development, organizational development, that's where I thrive. I really look, like to look at building teams of 90% A players. Like how do we get the most out of our people? How do we leverage their natural strengths and their gifts and their talents and their passions? Uh, what are some areas that they need to develop and, and what are the supports that we need to put in place to help with that so that we're continuing to help the, the people grow so that our companies can grow. So I'm really, really passionate about working with the people, um, creating and strengthening teams. A lot of that kind of ties into my background with being an elite athlete and working on high-performing teams. 
and looking at we're working towards a common goal. Uh, we have a common purpose. We have a shared set of values. So how do we leverage our unique capabilities in order to accomplish those goals that we set together? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, and it's interesting. And as I've seen over the years, the the translation from what creates a high performing team in sport to what creates a high performing team in business, there is much more similarities than I initially thought. There's a lot. I mean, the the skills are different. I mean, the skills of an athlete versus the skills of a an executive. The tactical skills are different, but the leadership capabilities and the leadership strategies are often very very similar, and it translates a lot. That's cool. Awesome. So in terms of clients, like we work with lots of different clients and lots of different industries and lots of different situations and without using names, because that's, <laughs> that's not what this is about, but what is your favorite kind of client to work with? Like whether it's the situation that they're in or what they believe, whatever it happens to be, what's your favorite? My favorite kind of client would just be someone that is willing to take on the world, uh, really wants to make an impact. Like for me, it's all about impact. Mm -hmm. So whether it's mm -hmm. impact with their business within the community and an impact in terms of like helping their people grow and helping their people realize there's so much more to, to life in this world. So those are the type of people I, I love to partner with. Yeah. Um, they have really, really big ideas, big vision, you know, entrepreneurial move really fast, have a growth mindset are, are not stuck in mediocrity, yeah. accept mediocrity. Um, just people that want to stretch themselves, you know, and have a good time doing it. Yeah. So how does this summarize that? Truly entrepreneurial people who want to have an impact beyond just making money. Yes. That's, yeah. And the same. And most, most, almost everyone we work with in our firm is like that. Well, obviously the, the businesses make money and we want them to continue to be profitable, but it's, they truly want to make an impact beyond just profit. Right. That's cool. They want to impact beyond just the shareholders balance sheets and yeah perfect so we you know our firm is about simple and powerful tools to help people to be more effective and the philosophy of is you know if you know people use the right tools it can help to enhance their performance uh, and their understanding which can sustain their performance so what would you say the most powerful tool that you use with clients is your kind of you know the tool that you know if we were to someone was to say you know you can't use it anymore you would fight to the death? Well, for me, I, I do a lot of different types of work with our clients. So I would say it's it's more situational. Um, I Number one, I mean, goals are very, very important. There needs to be clear alignment in terms of what's the goal, what's the outcome, what are we trying to achieve? So that's, I mean, the initial framework, obviously. But in terms of building a team of 90% A players, the top grading methodology is something I am super passionate about. And again, really just what is that A player fit for us? So they're a high performer and they fit our values. They live and breathe our culture and, and they fit the gaps of what that team's looking for. Mm. And so I'm super, super passionate about making sure that we're bringing in the right people. Yep. And, and then in terms of developing the people, ties back into like what we were talking about earlier. What are their strengths? What are their passions? What do they want to achieve? How can we support them to get them there? So awesome. Top for sure. Um, any grammar. Ditto. Enough. Ditto. And by the way, I want to say top grading. I don't stop talking about it. Yes. And, you know, we do a lot of work with, uh, with that model with our clients because it is outstanding. Although it's hard. Yeah. Go ahead. Continue. So, you're, that, so that's one. That's one. You got a second one. The bonus one. Yeah. Um, I would say the Enneagram. It's, it's such a powerful tool for understanding ourselves and really what motivates us to operate and behave a certain way. And what I love about Enneagram is it's a framework that really helps us dive deep in terms of that motivation piece, but then also what holds us back. And so oftentimes I find that we hold ourselves back. We talk ourselves out of doing things. Yep. And so in terms of coaching, in terms of team dynamics, uh, creating better understanding, better communication, better relationships, it's such a powerful tool for all of that. So it's really a framework that I use in, in a lot of the work that I do to really help people understand themselves and what's holding them back, but then understand each other and then how we can work together more effectively to accomplish those goals. So it removes a lot of those barriers mm -hmm. and just allows us to, to push through and elevate ourselves and the team to a different level. 
It's an amazing tool. And like all of the best tools, it's simple, but deeply impactful. And I want to, you know, a shout out to uh, Jean-Pierre LeBlanc, who started talking to me about this a decade ago. And initially like, oh yeah, it's another assessment, another psychometric. I've seen them all. And he just kept talking about it and talking about it. And when I finally started to dig into it myself, like, holy. And like you said, it helps you understand your natural strengths and your natural weaknesses based on how you're wired and how you're motivated to show up in the world. It is incredibly powerful and you know for me as well i judge a tool by you know 10 years five years 20 years down the road is it still really impactful and that one absolutely stands the test of time it's well, it incredible it, it ties into the psychology of of leadership so i mean i'm very yes. passionate about that but it's really understanding ourselves and what i love about this framework too is it doesn't typify you in a sense of you're kind of just stuck in this box it shows mm -hmm. you where you're at today and it gives you a roadmap of how to evolve, how to move yeah. forward. A roadmap to freedom and better performance. Yes. Like internal freedom and externally better performance. Yeah, I agree. It's it's unbelievable. So top grading and Enneagram would be your top two, it sounds like. Awesome. So in, in, uh, in my book, Over My Shoulder, Your Oxygen Mask First, you know, we talk about resilience rituals as the things that you do for yourself to be at your best. So you can be the best for yourself and then self and then show up as your best as a leader or in your family and otherwise. So what would what would your resilience rituals be? Well, how I approach resilience rituals is these are the things that cause me to win. These are the things that I do because it sets me up for success. And if I don't do them, it actually decreases my chance mm -hmm. for success. Um, so it's really... I, I've really, you know, focused on what works best for me and it shouldn't feel like a task list. It shouldn't feel like these are chores and, and a burden to my day. These are the things that by doing these, it's going to cause me to feel alive. It's going to cause me to feel good. It's going to cause me to feel energy. So I, I approach it from the mindset of I'm going to start my day with the intent to thrive. And it's, it's really, really basic. I'll wake up and I will start to visualize. I have affirmations that I like to repeat to myself. And that really just gets me in that really good grounded mindset. Uh, I've incorporated breath work into this. That's, I found that's really, really helpful. Kind of ties back into being an elite athlete and like just really being connected to your body and feeling very strong and grounded. So it, it, it's just, it takes a few minutes at the start of my day, but that has really been a game changer. Mm. Um. And then what's really important to me, like from a spirit standpoint, I, as you know, I'm super competitive and I really like to compete and push myself and drive really fast. So I like to race cars, uh, drive my motorbike, see you, anything that just gets me out and I can just get my adrenaline pumping. And that's always fun. Uh, music blasting, of course. And connection is really important to me too. So making sure that I'm spending time connecting with my family, my friends. I love to adventure. So for me, I actually like to be busy on the weekends. I like to go out. I really am connected to music. So I really like concerts and, and music festivals, going places, seeing things, really good food, um, you know, having a glass of wine that's delicious, like anything that is is adventurous. So these are things that, that light me up. I'm getting right. excited. And I can see as you're talking about them, you're getting lit up talking about them. And that's the idea. Yeah, I've heard, you know, someone else was saying in, in many ways, if we were an electric car, it's like, what's the power source you plug into to get charged up and to be fully at your best, ready for everything, right? And you put it in context of winning, charging your batteries, you know, whatever it happens to be, those things are key. And you know, because just the way you describe it, you, you light up inside right. and it fuels you and, and, um, and they're critical. They're hard to do, but they're, they're hard for some people to do consistently. and But then when you don't, you realize you don't have the same energy or determination or whatever is required, and you're less likely to win your day. Right. And if you change the mindset around, these are the things that I need to do to be more successful, you got to do it. And yeah. when I do need that break, I, I found for me, like I need to schedule going to a spa or, or going to a massage, which will take care of my body for me. Because if, if, if I don't do that, sometimes I can push too much. And so I'm aware of that. Mm -hmm. Having that consistent routine is, is really, really helpful. And 
noticing like when, when you do need a little bit more space. And I know, you know, for me, water is really important. Um, having a bath, reading a book that is non-leadership or non-business related. That's, that's a really good way for me to write mm -hmm. down. Yeah. And the key is we got to have these, I just, I just came away for me, you know, short breaks. Like I just came away with a few days away with my daughter and I had time with her one-on-one -on -one in the sun and exploring a different place and having a great time. And, you know, I was just saying, I was talking to my daughter, but, you know, you know, if you didn't have to count the cost of the flights, tra traveling and going away for two or three days is awesome. It, it, it gives you a recharge. Well, for me, I get a recharge. It's just, and for me, I, I need those things, you know, even small ones more frequently seem to work. Again, it's a personal choice, but um, um, perfect. So final question is, you know, and, and we, we all get it, but what is the, the, the we all get it from different places. What, what is the best piece of advice you've ever received? And that would probably be the one that, you know, whether you repeat it yourself to others or it resonates in your head or you use it for decision-making, what's that best advice you've ever received? Man, <laughs> there's so much. I'm it. sure. So you can have two if you need to. You know what? The thing I think that stands out the most, because you're saying repeated in my head, is, is mind over matter. And so that's that's my grandmother coming through again. Um, she just said from a very, very early age, if you want to accomplish something, you put your mind to it and you will figure out a way. There's nothing stopping you except for yourself from accomplishing something. So figure it out. Put in some hard work and we'll get it done. Yeah, that's good advice. Isn't that kind of like the truth about life? Generally, most people, their biggest obstacle is themselves. It is. And they, they stop themselves before. It's magical when you commit to something, fully commit. Even if you don't know how or how it's going to work out, you generally, over time, if you persist, you find a way. But people uh, have a hard time with that. They, 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 it's almost, it takes a while for people and some people never get that it is just mind over matter. You, you find it, you commit to something that's important and then get to work. It's true. And that's why I love the work that I get to do is, you know, identifying those inner critics and that voice that's telling you why not and fueling yourself with reasons why. Yep. Why do this? What will, what will this cause? What, what's the passion? What's the excitement behind this? Like, let's, let's make it happen. And it's, it's such a cool thing to help someone with that and experience mm -hmm. and remove those barriers. Yeah. It's awesome. When you see someone had a big thing they wanted to achieve and somehow in their mind, it seemed impossible. And then six months later, it's done and they're on to the next thing. And the funniest thing is when that happens, they often forget how much they doubted it initially mm -hmm. because now they're, because they're in a different mindset. They have a different belief system. I had, a, I had a CEO once and he said, when he, when he, when he thought about achieving big things, he goes, Hmm. they're doing it they're doing it they're doing it why not me mm -hmm. you know because that was just getting over that belief system awesome Kristen thanks thanks and also thank you for all the awesome work you do with your clients your passion and your desire to win translates through to seeing your clients win so thank you for all the great work that you do and for everyone else if you have any more questions for Kristen you can always just send her a note our team is always fully accessible thank you bye everyone